despacito Despacito Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. If I look a little bit different today, that's because I'm rocking a makeup look that I typically would not rock. Everything on my face right now is a DIY makeup hack. The only thing that is not a makeup hack is the mascara on my eyelashes. Everything else I made myself. And if you don't believe me, just check out this concealer that I made. Just check out this bronzer that I made. You guys thought I was kidding, didn't you? So this is the finished makeup look. The point of this video is not for you guys to do a full face of DIYs because let's be honest, that's absolutely ridiculous and only someone like me would do that. <laughs> but I wanted to inspire you guys and show you guys that you can make some pretty cool makeup products at home with just a few simple ingredients that you might already have at home or in your kitchen. So if you're running out of your favorite bronzer, you don't have to panic and run to your nearest Sephora. All you need to do is just grab a few ingredients that you may already have at home or in your kitchen, whip it up, and in minutes, you're gonna have an amazing dupe. So without further ado, if you want to see me apply a full face of makeup life hacks and DIYs, then please keep watching. Okay, ladies, so by now I think the entire makeup community is aware that glycerin is the secret ingredient in helping your makeup last longer. So instead of finding a face primer or moisturizer with this stuff, try vegetable glycerin. It's cheaper, effective, and will nourish and moisturize your skin at the same time. I got mine off of iHerb.com, which I will link for you guys in the description box for those of you that are interested. All you wanna do is gently pat a couple of drops onto your clean skin until it feels tacky and you're good to go. Let's talk complexion. Now I'm not gonna call this one foundation because to be honest, it doesn't have a lot of coverage, but it will even out your complexion and give you a healthy glow. So I guess it's safe to call this a DIY BB cream. Yeah, that sounds good. BB cream it is. So to make it, you want to combine one teaspoon of shea butter, one teaspoon of vegetable glycerin, and a combination of cocoa powder and cinnamon to customize your color. Just a tip, don't do what I did by dumping the dry ingredients right into the mixture. I was just being a savage. I ended up putting way too much of the dry ingredients and my BB cream turned out way too dark, so I had to mix in more of the shea butter and vegetable glycerin into the mixture to lighten it up. A little goes a long way, my friends. Trust me on this one. Okay, so once you have your little mixture, I would recommend using it right away and transferring it over to an airtight container. If you keep it exposed and let it sit for too long, it will start to dry up and become very difficult to blend. I found that the best way to work with this stuff is to apply it to one part of your face at a time and blend it out with a damp beauty blender right away. The key with making this stuff look natural is to blend, 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 and then blend some more. Hey, no one said that cost efficiency was easy. You can also build up the coverage a little bit more with a second layer if you wanted to. Okay, so I know that you have a really burning question right now about what my face smelled like. And I'm happy to tell you that I smelled like a delicious cinnamon bun with a drizzle of chocolate. Okay, now for concealer, cause no one's got time for dark circles, honey. To make your own, combine a little bit of a facial moisturizer and please feel free to use less than I did. I have no idea why I was being such a savage today with my measurements. And then you want to add in some powdered foundation in a shade that's about two to three shades lighter than your skin tone if you want a highlighted effect as well. The more pigment you add into the moisturizer, the more coverage you're going to get. So start with a little bit and keep adding in the powder foundation until you get your desired coverage. Once you think you've got it, apply to your under eyes, eyelids, and anywhere else you want to brighten and even out your skin and blend out with a damp beauty blender. Just like with the DIY BB cream, don't let this sit for too long without being covered up because otherwise it will become very difficult to blend. If you accidentally let that happen, just blend, 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 and get your beauty blender more damp to sheer it out. Now for the eyebrows. I can't believe how easy this DIY eyebrow pomade was to make. It's literally just vegetable glycerin and cocoa powder. The more cocoa powder you add in, the more pigmented it will be. If you have lighter brows, you can use cinnamon and for reddish tones, you can use a nutmeg. 
All you gotta do now is mix it up until it's smooth and then apply it to your eyebrows using an angled liner brush for the most precision. And let's not forget about keeping those brow hairs in place. One of my favorite brow hacks is to get a spoolie and roll it in some hand soap. I like to quickly run my soap underwater before doing this so the soap is softer and easier to get on my brush. Then I just comb my brows through with it and shape them the way that I want. Works like a charm every single time. Ah, uh, let's talk setting powder. So I noticed that most of my favorite setting powders are made of one simple ingredient, silica. So I thought, why not just buy silica in a supplement form and take it out of the capsule? It's so much cheaper. Yes, it's not as finely milled and not as convenient, but it still gets the job done. I just applied over any areas where I applied my concealer using a tapered brush and it looks so good. This next DIY makeup pack is probably my favorite. This is a DIY bronzer made out of equal parts of cornstarch, cocoa powder, and cinnamon. Mix the ingredients together and you've got a dupe for the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil bronzer. Well, kind of. Just a warning, this stuff is very, very pigmented, so a little bit goes a long way. Make sure you tap off any excess powder from your brush before applying it to your face and enjoy the delicious aromatherapy from the cocoa powder and cinnamon. Mmm. And yes, that cocoa powder dropping on my head will remain on my head for the remainder of this video. Okay, now let's contour that schnoz, shall we? If you're a newbie and have a hard time getting your lines straight like I once did, I feel you girl. Don't worry and just use a chopstick as your guideline by placing it over the bridge of your nose and then line the sides with a little bit of bronzer. Remove the chopstick, contour the tip of the nose, and then use a beauty blender to blend out any harsh edges for a natural look. Another one of my favorite makeup hacks is to use makeup products you already have at home in more ways than just the one it was intended for. For example, you can use lippies to add a pop of color to the cheeks and act as a blush. Here I just dabbed a little bit of this NYX soft matte lip cream on the apples of my cheeks and blended it out with a damp beauty blender for a soft flush of color. You see stereophonic sound for the home is recorded on two separate tracks each one giving special emphasis to certain sections of the office. Let's move on to the eyes. For that soft transition shade, I'm going in with that same bronzer that I created earlier using a fluffy blending brush. I think it's the perfect shade for fair to medium skin tones and blends out beautifully. Just remember to tap off any excess powder and gradually build your color. Next, I'm adding a little more depth into the crease and outer Vs with some cocoa powder using a smaller, fluffy blending brush. Now, let's play with some glitter. I just picked up some non-toxic glitter off of Amazon and I'm using, you guessed it, vegetable glycerin as my glitter glue. My favorite way of applying the glitter to my eyelids is by mixing the glitter with the glycerin on the back of my hand first and then applying it to my eyelids with a flat shader brush. Now, please don't judge me on my application here. Looking back, I probably should have applied the glitter all over my eyelid instead of just the middle, but we all make mistakes, right? Oh God, Nikki, this looks awful. Get it together. This is another one of my favorites, DIY liquid highlighter. Combine equal parts of castor oil and vegetable glycerin, 
see how versatile this stuff is? And then add in your pigment. I decided to go with these two beautiful shimmery shades from my Okaland palette to get a rosy champagne shade, and you can customize this depending on your skin tone. So if your skin is more fair, stick with a lighter shimmery shade. If you're darker, you can go with a bronze or copper shade. There are no rules, so just have fun with it. My favorite way of applying it to the skin is by dabbing it onto the high points of my face and then blending it out with a damp beauty blender. I'm also applying this highlighter to the inner corners of my eyes using a small pencil brush. Okay, now I was just as skeptical about this next makeup pack as I'm sure many of you are, but guys, I'm telling you, it works. So if you struggle to get your winged eyeliner even, try using the edge of a toothpick flosser as a stamp to guide you. Yep. I said toothpick flosser. Now I have to say that this trick works way better when you don't have glitter on your eyelids and it works best when you think of it as a guiding tool, not a miracle worker, okay? So the way that I like to use it is a stamp on the outer wing and then I perfect it with the tip of my liquid liner. No lip liner, no problem. Just mix a drop of aloe vera gel with a little bit of a powdered blush or eyeshadow and then line away. Aloe vera is super moisturizing and doesn't bleed because of its viscous consistency, so it's perfect for using as a lip liner dupe. I always like to fill in my lips with it too because it creates a beautiful light stain on the lips. Now let's top off the lips and make them nice and juicy. Combine a little bit of vegetable glycerin with any pigment you want. I went with a combo of these three Tarte blushes. Mix it up and apply over the lips for a one of a kind shade that will keep your lips hydrated and nourished all day long. And lastly, no makeup look is complete without a setting spray. I love making my own rose water because it's a wonderful setting spray and it makes my skin glowy, dewy, and healthy. So all you wanna do is remove the petals from three roses. I prefer red because it gives your rose water a beautiful pink color, but you can use any roses you want and then rinse them off with water. Then bring a small pot of water to a boil, reduce to simmer, and then transfer your rose petals to the water. Let the rose petals infuse the water for 15 minutes and then remove the petals from the water and let the liquid cool down for a few minutes before transferring it over to your storage containers. I always like to make a big batch of this stuff and transfer a little bit into a spray bottle which is good for up to two to three weeks. And then the rest I keep in mason jars in my fridge. You can store the rose water for about two to three months in the fridge as long as you don't open them. I also love using this rose water spray on my hair, scalp and body too. Okay, my love, so that wraps up today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and found some of these hacks inspirational, and I hope you'll try them out, at least the bronzer hack, because honestly, this bronzer has changed my life. Let me know which makeup life hack was your favorite and which one you're dying to try out. And if you have any video requests for me, please be sure to leave them for me in the comments below. I'm gonna be reading them. And as always, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me, and I'll see you in my next one.